kids' parents taught them anything about manners? What you up to? I'm cleaning up someone else's mess. Super keen sometimes. I swear, if you ever do something like this, you would be in so much trouble. I mean, if I'm being honest here, I actually quite like it. Hmm. You know, that is pretty. When did they have to ruin it? Uh, on another note, I'm just came by to let you know that we're having another guest today, so I mean, be prepared. Can't wait to see who gets hurt in today's episode. Okay, well, I'll finish up here and I'll come in in a moment. Alrighty. Oh, I'm sorry for the mess. What? Miss... So no you di- Style. A distinctive appearance, typically determined by the principles according to which something is designed. A style can be many different things, but I like to see it as how you do something in a certain way. Whether it's the way you draw, or the type of music you make, hell, even how you cook your everyday meal. <coughs> Those ramen noodles. It's adding your own take onto something, and really can make that thing unique and filled with personality. I feel like Sega has a lot of style in their own IPs, but they don't use them at all. IPs like Crazy Taxi, Skies of Arcadia, Space Channel 5, Samba de Amigo, Super Monkey Ball, Knights, Billy Hatcher, and Shenmue! Ah! It's a real shame since behind these IPs are some incredible games that just bleed creativity and bring something new. However, they just don't get enough love from the masses, you know, to make it worthwhile for the companies to invest money and more time and effort just to expand these universes. And this surely applies to the 2000 game Jet Set Radio and its sequel, Jet Set Radio Future. It's technically a revision, but I'm calling it a sequel because it came afterwards. Hey guys. Oh, so that's our guest today. I brought you some roller skates. Uh, why? Aren't we going to tag some places around town? Oh no, no way in hell are you guys committing a crime, especially Ruby. The only crime I ever commit is never being caught. A... Did she already forget about this situation with C&D? Besides, you guys have to finish your video anyways. Okay. If we get down to it, Jet Set Radio just screams with personality. From its visuals to its soundtrack, it just stands out with its presentation compared to its competitors. At the time when the original Jet Set Radio was made, it was also the rise of 3D modeling. With this new tool, a lot more companies try to make their games look realistic. However, with hardware limitations, these models just didn't look realistic. Sure, for their time, they were still amazing, but give these games 10 years and they can't hold up from a visual perspective. Now, compare that to Jet Set Radio, originally released for the Dreamcast, its combination of its cell shaded graphics, the textures, and the lighting that hides its thousand plus polygon models. If you want to put that into perspective, the models in Super Smash Bros. Melee had 4,000 plus polys, and that came out a year later. And the Sonic Boom models were made with 10,000 plus polygons, and those things look like they were ripped from a freaking PS2 game. My point is, games that don't try to be incredibly realistic are usually the ones that time is a lot kinder to. To be fair though, even if you were making cartoony models at this time, they were still very limited. Jet Set took those limitations and used it to further the game's style. It took the clunky, exaggerated shapes and used it to further the art. It's with the game's theme. This all works together. I realized I haven't like, explained the plot of this game, so uh... The game is about a group of teens roaming around the streets of Tokyo. To rollerblading and spray painting graffiti. The thick lined cell shaded aesthetic just fits with the whole graffiti look. Almost like these characters came straight off of a spray painted wall in a skate park somewhere. Hey, where did your little robot friend go? Beats me. Oh, well, do you want to head out then? I don't think we should. Nah, I'm down. Of course you'd be. Come on, Snowy, please. Don't be a buzzkill. I mean, I'll go. I'll just watch. What are you scared? Ruby, it's fine. Let's go. Jet Set Radio wouldn't be the same without its, well, radio. Oh, that was a horrible transition. The game gets its name from the pirate radio station with the same name, which is run by DJ Professor K, who fills you in on all the street knowledge. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. But with this, the whole soundtrack of the game comes into play, and it's the other half of the style, which, I mean, mm, is good. This game's music was mostly composed by Hideki Naganuma, and damn, does he do a good job. Each stage has a variety of tracks playing that perfectly fits the mood. I could easily say that it's one of my favorite video game soundtracks of all time. On my first playthrough, I felt so badass skating past cops and tagging up cars, mostly because of the music. 
It makes you feel so alive and immerses you into the world that is Jet Set Radio. Jet Set Radio actually reminds me of gorillas in a way. Uh, shameless plug, go, go watch that one video I did. The sound of Jet Set Radio is just so many different genres of music that blend into each other. And what's impressive is none of it really feels out of place. Nothing stands out in a bad way. And it actually has some really good tracks like, you know, uh, Butterfly, Funky Dealer, uh, that one song about mom's not sleeping. And Jet Set Radio's soundtrack made me realize I had a love for funk music I didn't know I had. It's got a little everything for someone, so if you don't listen to OSTs too often for video games, you should check it out, because who knows, you'll probably find something that you really enjoy. You're free to go. Somebody's bailed you out. Wait, where's Twig? The officer never said it was Twig who bailed us out. But this is supposed to be one of those heartfelt moments, Ruby, where, you know, we expect that we're going to get murdered and, well, not literally, but, you know, you know, we're going to get in so much trouble, we, we realize we've done so much wrong, and then at the end of the day, Twig forgives us, and we live happily ever after. I mean, I do, but you're still grounded. Wow, I've learned my lesson today. I really should have listened to the disclaimer of the Jet Set Radio startup screen. What, the Sega isn't responsible for your actions? I mean, yeah, but even though graffiti is art, you shouldn't ruin public property. I also should have listened to you, giant robot dude. I'm sorry. Well, I'm glad you learned your lesson. I'd still probably do it again, though. Shh. Let me feel like a good parent for once. Look, if you haven't had the chance to play Jet Set Radio yet, I... I highly recommend you do so. The game is just so much fun and it's just one of Sega's best. Sadly, the sequel hasn't had a port of any sort and there isn't really a way to play it. And yes, this even includes emulators for, you know, you people that emulate your games. So unless you have the original Xbox, your best option is just to watch someone play it. Like our guest Alexa Cat, who's doing a Let's Play on it right now. Ooh, God. However, there is light at the end of the tunnel since Sega right now is in the talks of bringing back some old IPs for 2020. So. Fingers crossed for Jet Set Radio Future, just please port it. Luckily, the original is still on Steam, PS3, Xbox 360, Mobile, and Game Boy Advance. That's an entire video in itself. <laughs> Honestly, any kind of way you can jump into the series, it's worth it. Just, just do it. Style. A distinctive appearance typically determined by the principles according to which something is designed. And I'd have to say, Jet Set Radio is a master of this craft.